Well, as you can imagine, uh, it's hard to believe that it's September 25th and we're having these. We used to be religious on uh, Doug Weaver's birthday. It was uh, October 15th forever, and then it's kind of come back down, but the 25th seems early. But at the same time, I'm excited to get started. It seems like basketball never ends now. We have these things all summer long that you're allowed to do. And uh, other than a slight uh, ankle sprain to Jay Makin's uh, Saturday, we've been really healthy. Um, getting Malik Hall back in about beginning of August has really helped. He's still not maybe 100% back as far as skill level in that but he is 100% back as far as health, and that right now has been something he hasn't been 100% since probably his sophomore year. So very encouraging with Malik. Um, real quickly before I open it up to some questions. Um, depth, we have it. Those of you that were upset with me last year for not going and getting more depth, I understood. Uh, now that the same set of people are saying, how are you gonna play 11 guys and so um, it's a good thing media and fans are all alike you can't please everybody but uh, I think the biggest plus with having a deeper team is I got enough veterans and they've done an incredible job of working with the four freshmen and you know my theory of player coach teams I was better than a coach coach team and those players have done one hell of a job acclimating relationships in this transaction BS world we're in uh, we actually still have a relationship based program that uh, we're gonna have as long as I'm standing in front of you or I won't be standing in front of you so I'm excited about that I think um, we do have some guys that have improved a lot we've got some guys that have gained weight Jaden 10 pounds Marty 20 pounds we've had a guy that's lost some weight um, that I think is, is important and, and it's been a very uh, fun and energy, enjoyable summer and fall. It always is when you don't play a game and you don't have a loss. Until then, I'm going to continue to have fun. After that, it might not be as much fun. So you probably have more questions than I have time. I was sorry, but I was meeting one of my favorite football players, Lorenzo White, and uh, that was... So I put you off for five minutes. My apologies. Questions? Tom, um, you're probably going to be in top five, top ten status when the polls come out. Um, Hallelujah. And, and that, that's going to be new for a lot of you guys. It's been a couple of years since you've been in the preseason. What do you need out of the veterans on this team to kind of navigate that? Well, the realized rankings mean nothing would be one. And I, I think when you've gone through things like AJ and, you know, when you've, uh, you've gone through uh, – last second losses to UCLA and watch them go to a final four when you when you see what happened last year and how close you really are and there's always some things that happen in the NCAA tournament that um, somebody always loses every year somebody lost meaning that you would have played last year it might have been Tennessee where you expected to play uh, I can't remember, I think the year that we got beat by UCLA, it was Texas who got upset in the next round, you know? So it makes your path better. I think those guys understand that, but I also think they realize that rankings don't mean a lot. What I like about the rankings for us is I think it's been earned. You know, our players have developed, we've gotten a little older, we've, uh, they're not because of necessarily our recruiting class, they're more, from the body of work we've done, and uh, and I think that makes it where it's been earned, not given. Last time you had a class like this, you didn't have a lot of it was like the Miles uh, and Cashers. You didn't have a lot of upper class in the lead. Now. What what is the can you speak to the value of the older guys that these guys sort of have to earn their way as herald as they are, and what that allows you to do, and how that changes that dynamic. Well, I think it's true. You know, I look at Kentucky, and you know, when they bring in a slew of freshmen, I, I said to my assistants the other day in practice, no, and I feel, you know, bad. I mean, that's hard to do that and just have freshmen with no upperclassmen leadership. And I think I had one class that we didn't have as much leadership in the junior and senior class, and that created problems for our freshmen and sophomores that lived with it for a while. These guys 
Malik, AJ's done a pretty good job. Malik, Tyson, Jaden has done a great job. Marty's done a great job with the younger guys. And uh, they can do a better job than I can do. So it, it really, um, I think they're going to be better players because competition is going to be better because they bring that youth enthusiasm and, you know, and everything. But knowledge is going to be better because our upper class, we can do it. They can watch them do it. And uh, so I think the combination of the two is going to really benefit us. I hope. Tom, uh, hello. Uh, how, uh, how does this team compare to the best teams you've had talent-wise? And how about, like, grit-wise, character, yeah. uh, basketball toughness? Yeah, some of that's yet to be seen. I mean, talent-wise, I mean, there probably is more talent in the freshman class, if I looked at it that way, uh, of pure raw talent. And, uh, you know, when you look back at, you know, you'd say talent-wise, are they as good as the Cleves' teams? Well, you know, and then you start going through it. Let's see, uh, Peterson wasn't a top 200 kid. This guy wasn't a top this and that, you know. Um, so talent is sometimes an overused word. I, what I think we have is we have potential of very good guard play. You know, AJ keeps coming along, and we all know that that's been a work in progress. I mean, Tyson and Jaden have had a malicious summers. Uh, Fears and, and, um, and Trey Holloman. Trey Holloman is maybe one of my more improved players. So that's been good as far as that goes. And then some of those wings like Cohen, you know, um, it was great having Jason Richardson back two weeks ago because he was able to talk to him about, you know, what it's like to, to just be a great jumper. You know, remember JR wasn't a very good shooter when he was here, but he, he worked on it. Cohen has been a worker. And, He's going to be able to play two positions. And we do have some depth inside. And it is going to be tricky on who you play. And that, too, will be earned and not given. So it's nice when it has to be earned and not when you're forced into it. Like Miles' year, we lost all three of those big guys to knee injuries. And we were scrambling. Guys were playing by default and more than by, by uh, earning it. So I think this is going to be better. But there's going to be tricky things to navigate. Uh, there's no secret about it, and that's why practices, I think, are going to, they've been competitive all summer. They've been really competitive in the fall. I think they're going to be even more competitive, which will help. Uh, Tom, you know, we're talking about top five ranking and the end of the talent level on this team. It seems like on the outside, you guys check so many boxes, but I'm wondering your position, they want to practice here. What are your, if concerns is the word, or maybe unknowns when it well, seems well, like Larry, the second part that I didn't answer, and I apologize, but you're bringing it up, so I'll answer it for both of you. You know, leadership's always a concern. I mean, these guys are not born to lead anymore. They're born to follow, or they're born to be individuals, you know, or in the Twitter world. I'm going to get my, my uh, commercial in, started the new year, you know, where it's all about me. And uh, I think that's ridiculous. And, uh, but I think that's the problem a lot of coaches have. What I've seen so far is it's been all about us. And then part of that reason is because kids have failed. You know, kids have failed. You don't go to Michigan State and, and not finish in the top two or three in the conference for two years in a row. You don't, you know, you get the final fours. You don't get beat in the first round or even in the second as often. And uh, so kids are allowed to fail, which usually makes you better. The new system is kids are not allowed to fail. And so I still got some kids that have failed. And uh, I love that because I think they're, they, they're going to pass that along and they're going to know. So leadership is still a concern of mine. Uh, maybe the number one concern. Can we lead um, the right way? Can we gather people? Can we work towards a common goal in a DNA where we're a selfish world? And that's kind of what every coach and every sport is trying to do. Anything basketball-wise, I guess, if I could follow up? You know, that um, it seems like yes, check Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know if we're great scoring in the post yet. We're better. Uh, I don't know if we're great. Um, I'm, I'm concerned at shot selection a little bit, you know. Guys want to prove they're three-point shooters. Usually when they want to prove they are something, they prove they're not. So that's what, starting today, shot selection and turnovers will be more of an emphasis. Um, that's yet to be seen. And then, and then the biggest concern is how we put everybody together. And 
whether they can, you know, work together like it seems like they have. But let's face it, you know, their girlfriends, their buddies, their parents, you know, they haven't played three minutes in a game yet, so they have something to complain about. I mean, that's right around the corner, and I'm kind of looking forward to it. So when you said hallelujah in the top ten, you weren't kidding, all right? You prefer the bigger expectation discussion? Yeah, I really do. I mean, I, I, I prefer it because it's been earned by so many guys in the past that that's when they put the program. I didn't put it there. They put it there. And um, and uh, you're damn right, they deserve, it deserves to be a top 10 program. I think over 20 years, it's been a top 10 program. I think the last two or three years, it has not been a top 10 program. And so back in the saddle, now we got to stay in the saddle, you know. But uh, yeah, hallelujah. I mean, I, I mean it, it's not pressure when you've been there and done that. It's, um, it's pressure not to be there. I didn't enjoy it. Everybody said it last year, the year before, you sneak up on people. You know what, I'd rather run the race from the front than run the race from behind. You talked a little bit about the big men in the position. Coming back this year, what have you seen from those guys in the summer? And the well, Marty's 25 pounds heavier and uh, just a different kid. You know, sometimes strength and confidence, you know, worried about he's going to, you know, lose his speed and his jumping ability, he's blocking shots, he's more aggressive, he's been better. Um, uh, uh, Jackson Kohler, is, his body's completely different and uh, he's been jumping better, running better, doing things better and, uh, and Carson, who's kind of my unsung guy, is, uh, I mean, he's a man now, he's, he's really changed his body too and uh, because of that um, you know sometimes added strength means added confidence and the guy that's you know coming on now is, is Booker and he's definitely the most talented I mean and, uh, and what I love about Booker is he has expectations but he has realistic expectations you know his parents have been great he knows what he's got to get better at it's always hard to do that. I mean, it's, you have no idea what it's like, how hard you played in high school and how hard you have to play in college. And so he's learning that as we go, and he's done a damn good job. I'm, 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 I'm pleased with him, not where I need him to be or where I want him to be. But when I try to compare him to a Jaron Jackson, it's, you know, similar bodies coming in. But Jaron... Uh, you know, Dad played in the league. He knew a little bit more in that respect. But still, did we never ever think Jaron was going to be a one and done? We didn't. I don't think he did. And he ends up the fourth player taken. So big guys are, are strange. What you see at the beginning of the year, you know, Draymond, Xavier, they were here two weeks ago, you know. We were laughing about their freshman year, playing three minutes a game, five minutes a game, the first part of the year, and then moving up to ten minutes a game for, for Draymond. I think he ended up like 13 because uh, I figured out that in winning time, so he wouldn't play the whole game and I'd just play him at winning time, win the game and go home. It was a hell of a deal. But uh, I think, you know, all those bigs are, have gotten better and uh, whether they'll be good enough, you know, only time will tell. I think the, the other fear I have, I have no idea what's out there, none. The only, the only person I have an idea what's out there is Purdue. Because they've got most of their same guys back. They've got all their same guys back. But I mean, so many teams have transfers. Transfers can help you. In basketball, where chemistry is important, they can hurt you. And so I have no idea those people that have picked up transfers, and there's a slew of them. Those teams could be a lot better than I thought. And they could not, you know. So there's a lot of unknown out there. Usually you pick up the magazine or some of the things you guys write. It's pretty gospel, you know. It's, it's, now it's, it's like a fiction movie, you know, like who the hell knows. Time for one or two more. You mentioned at the end of your season last year, the presser that you, when you wrap everything up, that it was going to be interesting to see how you could keep everybody happy. How have you been able to do that through the summer as you lead into the season? I just keep reminding them, remember those same people that are patting you on the back at Moneyball 
or the ones saying, hey, you gotta have more people. You know, one thing that you gotta realize is you don't usually get your cake and eat it too. And so, you know, there's, there's tough decisions that a coach has to make, especially right now. Do you wanna build a program? Do you wanna build a team? That's the two biggest things. Because if you would've gone out and got some 50 year guys last year, might help my team last year, you know, and hurt now. So what, what I'm looking for now is I have developed it and built it. So it's easier to tell those guys, um, you know, you're gonna play, but you're gonna play some of your limited mm -hmm. minutes. Um, and, and there's gonna be discussions every couple of weeks. There'll be no surprises. And we just had a big meeting with our staff that we're gonna chart more, we're gonna keep track of more, what teams win when we have certain teams each game. Because what you'll usually find out is certain teams have best, best players, certain teams have guys that win games. Um, you know, I don't get paid for best players, I get paid for winning games. And so, you know, is it gonna be a, I won't say a chore, because I don't think it's a chore. I think players will determine where they are and, uh, and if, you know what, I have played 11. And I've got a couple of years and went to Final Four as I played 11. I mean, and, uh, and we haven't talked about injuries, you know, we're in the load management world now. So we got parents calling probably, uh, you know, guys will be out because they sprained their pinky and they gotta take an extra two weeks. You know, we haven't, none of those things have even come up yet. So there'll be a lot of things to deal with. Um, all I know is this, right now, and I'll take one or two more questions, but right now, I like the chemistry of this team. It's always good when there are games. I understand that. But it's not always good when there are not games, because there's been years when I think there's been jealousies and this and that. Uh, I give our upperclassmen credit, you know, for a class that comes in third, fourth, sixth, whatever that class came in. These guys have handled it very well. I'll give the freshmen credit I think they've uh, showed some respect for the upper class because when I sat those guys down and said, remember now, they've almost gone to a final four. They were an eyelash away from maybe getting the one. They've also gotten beaten in the first round. They've been through it all. They know what it's like. Learn from it. Anything else? Just felt like I've got to ask you, Tom, about with what's going on with the football program. Do you have any thoughts there? Because obviously you've been very supportive of everything, you know. Right yeah. Now. Well, to be honest with you, as you can imagine, I mean, I am focused in and excited. I mean, this wasn't phony. I'm excited about today, you know. But I also, I, I look at it and uh, I, I, I kind of, I wrote around the tailgates in the last three weeks. And I... I just, the day has come when I'm really proud of our fans for, you know, we've been through a lot. We, we've, but it's, we've been through a lot in the past too. I mean, you know, and, and, uh, and Spartans are resilient. And, um, you know, I unfortunately don't know probably even half as much as most of you think I know because I think everybody thinks when you've been somewhere a hundred years, you know, you know where all the bodies are buried and what's happened and what's going on. and who's doing what and where and why and when, and I don't. Um, I feel for those players. I uh, feel for the staff over there that, uh, you know, it's been dealt a tough hand. But I also thought there were some encouraging things Saturday. Um, I, I loved uh, the pregame stuff here. I, uh, as I went around, I, I enjoyed people. I think we're rallying behind, and for that, I thank all the fans out there. And, uh, and I thank the staff and the players over there for hanging in there. You know, adversity makes all of us stronger. And uh, what will happen, you probably know more than I do. What I know is I'm sporting that football team because it's still my favorite sport. So everybody knows it hasn't changed and it won't change. Uh, I don't know when it'll change. It's probably not gonna change in my lifetime. Um, and I, I will not miss a game that I can't miss. If I'm going the road with them, I'm going on the road. And I think you all know what I believe, that to have a successful athletic department, you need a successful football team. But in saying that, I went to the soccer game the other night. We beat Indiana. 
watched our volleyball team beat Michigan. I've watched the growth in our wrestling program. Our soccer women's team is back in the top 25. If you read anything about hockey, um, you know, I like looking over at his office because there's heat coming out of it, you know? Guy's done a fantastic job and he's doing a fantastic job. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna be a full supporter of Harlan and um, Alan and we're gonna just do what we do, man. We're gonna fight through this and uh, there's gonna be a lot of positive things that happen. And um, Tom, just uh, following up on that, um, have you been, as the face of the university, have you been asked to speak to the team? If so, would you say, if not, what would your message be to those players right now? No, I haven't asked to, been asked to speak to the team. They've got football coaches over there doing their job, and uh, you know, I've talked to those guys. But um, my message to everybody is stay the course and uh, and do what I said in the shooting game. You know, grass arms stick together. Um, adversity is, you know, what you learn from. Um, I'm afraid that too many, not that you want it, but too many kids are going to grow up with no adversity because they'll just transfer and leave and do this and that. I'm, I'm, uh, I would tell them all to stick together. Stick together, fight the fight, let's grow and get better. I mean, we started out a couple years poorly. I saw some promise in, in the last game. I mean, you can't turn the ball over. I mean, that's a football, basketball. It doesn't matter what sport you're in, you can't turn the ball over. We did. Um, and uh, we just got to keep moving forward. So that's no new rock me speech, but uh, believe in yourselves and believe in your teammates, I think is a big thing right now. Remember, players play the game. Last one. Well, listen, uh, I know you guys got a lot of stuff going to. Uh, I said, uh, I, I don't know what I said to him, but you're welcome to come down and, uh, and watch a little bit. Um, you know, if you can stand the language and whatever else comes with it, God bless you. Uh, we're gonna, um, we're trying to do a lot of things. You know, that Tennessee game is gonna be a big thing. I think it's an awesome opportunity. I think Rick was phenomenal with it. He was supposed to play in Maui this year. Now it's been moved. I'm playing there next year. I think I've been there four times. So doing this for them and to give back and teach your players, it's, it's good to try to help others. That's a phenomenal thing. We're getting Midnight Madness cranked up. We're getting the uh, sleep out in the tent. If any of you media guys have enough courage and, and women, you get a tent and sleep out and see what it, the real world lives like. And uh, so I'd, uh, I'd even have a media row if you had a little courage and wanted to do it. to find out that all this crap you hear about kids, if you give them a venue and you stick with them, and 26 out of the 28 years because of COVID, we've had no problems over there. And there's anywhere from 2,000 to 4,500 kids, you know? Everybody will do what they're demanded and held accountable to do to a certain extent. And uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited about the start of our season. I'm excited what the other sports are doing. And I'm excited to, to see our football program. Uh, you know, Harlan gets a chance here. And, and hopefully we can move forward there. And, uh, and some of you probably think it's all BS. It's not. Because I've been through some things here that uh, trumpet all this. And uh, guess what? Still standing, learned from it, got better from it, gonna get better from it, and will continue to learn and grow, and that's what it's all about. So put a smile on your face, enjoy the day, watch practice. I'll try to keep Colin Carr's head off my rim. Huh? Can we scrimmage too? He's scrimmage.